Hi there, this is Christine Reynolds and I am back with part three, which is hopefully the last part, of my Thomas Kincaid coloring tutorial, coloring this foxglove cottage image with Prismacolor pencils. If you didn't start at the beginning, you can go back to part one and part two and see how we got to the point that we are today. I will admit that since the last time I saw you, I did go in and just finish coloring up all these little tall flowers. I had left some of them blank in part two because I thought I was going to come in and, and make some of them a different color. If you recall, the original card that I made had turquoise and I think some pink in there. And um, I've just decided that for this card I'm not going to do that, so I went ahead and, and finished coloring those all red and purple. I promise you that's the only thing I did since the last time we were together. So today, I'm hoping that we're going to finish this card off, so I hope you'll stick with me while we do so. I'm going to quickly finish the path and the yellow flowers, and then we'll get the house done. So for the path, we had started with Ginger Root uh, Prismacolor for the base, and now I'm going to come in with some Sienna Brown. And just to remind you, the Thomas Kincaid images kind of show you where to put the color. So I've already got all these little dark spots and I'm just going to kind of come in here with my dark pencil and just add the dark color in there wherever it seems to make sense. And then as I showed you last time, I'm going to blend that with my Prismacolor pencils. I'm sorry, I'm going to blend that with my Mineral Spirit. So I'm going to get out one of my blending stumps. And I've already got Mineral Spirits in this jar with a sponge. And so I can just tap that a few times and it gets my stump damp with the Mineral Spirits. And then I can just come in here and blend that darker color out a little bit. Just soften it up so it's not just such a sharp edge, I guess, is what I want to say. And I see a little few spaces I want to add some more. I want to put some around the edge of this grass here, just to define that a little bit. And then I'll just blend that out a little. Okay. So there's a little bit closer view so you can see how it's blended. Alright, I'm going to add to the yellow flowers. The base coat on all of those, if you recall from uh, the first video, is cream. And now I'm going to come in with orange, yellow, what, let's see, what is this, sunburst yellow. And I'm just going to add, just like we did with the other flowers, a little bit of dark highlights just to mix in because flowers are not just one color. So I just want to come in and add a little dark. And here and there, there's no specific method to my madness, really. I just want to get some color in there. And let's see, these are yellow flowers. Is that all of them? I think it is. Okay. Um, as long as I've got this color out, I'm going to add a little bit of dark yellow to all my light sources in this picture. My windows and my porch light. And then again, just like we've done with everything else, I'm going to blend my flowers a little bit.
Okay. Now I'm going to do the house, and I'm going to try and be quick so this video is not too long and we can get this done. I just picked up some different color grays for the um, stones on the house. I've got, mm, looks like 50% cool gray. I really should have put my glasses on. I've got 50% warm gray. I'm going to use a sienna brown, and let's see, for the house, I need a couple of blues. I've got blue slate and indigo blue. I may need the putty again to help with blending. Dark brown and um, orange. We'll talk about that in a minute. And Tuscan red. So it might be a little hard to see in this picture, but the first thing I'm going to do is come in and do the the shutters and the trim on the the house with this um, indigo blue. So I'm just going to come and do that edge. And the kind of the eaves is the darker part of the house. Right along the edge. And then there's shutters, and there's also curtains on the house. So it's a little difficult to see, but I'm just going to come in and do my shutter with the indigo blue. And I'm going to do the trim. On my window. And then my curtains, I'm going to come in with this Tuscan red. And up here. Okay. For my roof line, I had done the base with uh, slate blue, I believe. And I'm going to, I'm sorry, it was cloud blue that I did it, did it with. Now where's my cloud blue? Hmm, powder blue. There's my cloud blue. I'm just going to darken it up just a little bit. Very quickly. And then I'm going to come in with my slate blue and kind of get some of the shading done with the slate blue. And then I'm going to get this little piece over here. Oh, excuse me while I sharpen really quickly. This is how you know it's an actual real video. Because sometimes your pencil breaks. And I'll come in here. And the dog barks. <laughs> okay, you can tell I'm hurrying. I just noticed I forgot to do the door. And I'm going to do the door with the indigo blue. And I just noticed this other window also. This is what happens when you are coloring for real. Okay. Now for my stones, I'm just going to take the grays and the browns and just quickly go in here. 
doesn't have to be perfect. Just want to add some other colors with the stones. So that was my cool gray. I'm going to come up with a little warm gray. And then some of my umber. some dark brown on a couple of other ones. Then I'm going to come in with my putty and just go over it again. And it does pick up some of the the stone colors and that's okay. And I don't want to forget my chimneys. This is the terracotta. And when I blend that, that'll make more sense. But for now, I just want to get the color on there. So there's my house. And uh, final step is going to be to blend that out. So let's see what stump I want to use. Before I blend, I forgot one step to show you, and that's the windows. Um, to get the great glowing image in the Thomas Kincaid windows, I usually use a light yellow and then a darker yellow and then an orange kind of along the edge. And that's how you get that glowing look in the windows. And a little here. And my light. Where's my black? A black to define that light a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to blend these. I'm going to start with my roof, and I'm just going to go over the ledge and the dark areas just to soften them up a little bit and blend the I just realized I didn't do this area. Add a little bit of stone to the windows. Okay, the actual windows. Just going to 
to come in and blend them a little bit, soften up the orange. Okay, now we're going to do the house. I don't want to blend the, all the rocks into the house. I just want to kind of make them look a little bit more part of the house. So I do soften up the edges a little bit. Go over it. As you can see. But I really try not to blend out the color too much. I just want to soften it. in and try and soften up the curtains. Bright yellow there. And then I'm going to come and do the chimneys and I'm going to go over the dark part first. And then just blend in to the light parts. Okay, the only thing I see that I may have forgotten is um, um, the wood. So I just want to come in and add a little bit darker color to the wood. What is this? Chocolate. Let's see how the chocolate does. I just want to add a little outline to this tree, give it a little dimension. Go over some of these branches and then just hit up some of the fence areas with a little darker color. When I'm doing the tree with the blending stump, I am not really blending the dark out too much. I'm kind of blending the light into the dark because I don't, I want that dimension to still show. I think that does pretty well. And I'm not going to blend the fence a whole lot because, again, I don't, it's a pretty small area and I don't want to blend the dark and the light too much. I definitely want to have the dimension showing. Last thing I'm going to do, just to add a little gray in where this smoke is. And I think we're done coloring that. So I'm going to quickly turn this into a card. Just let me bring it up a little bit closer so you can see. We've got all the shading and the dimension. And again, that's all just with the Prisma pencils and the Mineral Spirits. I've got a card base that I already put together. Pull that out a little bit. It's just a purple card base with some green and the red, and I stamped Thinking of You, which is from the Cornish Heritage Farms Script Essential Expressions rubber stamps. And I will just um, quickly show you how this can become an amazing card.
And there you go. That is all it takes. I know this was a three-part video, but I think if you add up all the parts, you'll see that we spent about an hour on this card, which I think um, for coloring a beautiful image like this is going to be well appreciated by the recipient. I appreciate you sticking around. I hope you enjoyed the videos. I would love to hear some of your feedback and comments so that I know if this is something that you would like me to continue doing. If it is, I will be more than happy to share how I color some of the other images and uh, maybe even pull out my Copic markers. Thank you so much and have a great day.